Hello everybody, it's been a little while. Um, today we're going to be building a chlorate cell and um, I have a feeling that my chlorate cell is going to end up very much like um, this one. So this is um, this is Wallen site, wallen.homescientist.net, um, link in description obviously. And he has written up this really nice write-up about building a miniature chlorate cell. So we're going to be following this. Um, so I think we're going to be following it very closely. So I thought it was a good idea to start the video, um, you know, labeling my, my sources here. The big difference we're going to do is he builds here a potassium chlorate cell. Um, and we're going to be doing it as a sodium chlorate cell. But um, for this first part, it's not going to be a big difference because the... Uh, the build is going to be roughly the same. It explains a lot of the um, actual sort of electrochemistry and actual equations, which I and a lot of the theory that I won't go into. Um, you know about the cell efficiency and why we had the dichromate and that sort of thing. So that being said, let's go out and start building our own cell. Now the most important part of a chlorate cell are the electrodes, and I happen to be lucky enough to have got some. Beautiful electrodes off a Science Madness member. These are titanium and MMO. So these are basically the best you can get for a chlorate cell. Uh, maybe platinum slightly better, but this is a titanium strip here. And what he's done is he's spot welded um, titanium, you know, um, poles onto the electrode, which is not an easy feat to do. I believe he did it with a uh, microwave oven transformer to spot weld them. Uh, and it's they're beautiful really <laughs> it's it's perfect and, and I've had these for for um, oh, less than a year but quite a few months now and I haven't got around to building a cell which is um, you know a little bit disrespectful for me because these are so beautiful <laughs> I'm going to be putting it in this jar here because it's quite a large jar um, and the electrode should fit in there nicely and give a little bit of space at the bottom for some crystals to settle if that happens also a plastic lid so the electrodes don't just you know short through the metal lid um, so it's just a matter of putting putting two holes in here for the electrodes so we can mount them in there and as per usual I've wrecked the lid with glue but that's just to try and um, keep all the gas in um, I'll when this is all dry I'll make a hose hole for the hose and that'll you know go to a scrubber or whatever but um, this lid could all open so I just had to seal it all this lid is not properly but when it does the electrodes do have a slight slant but that's not a huge issue as long as they're you know nicely level compared to each other so that they're sort of even wearing on on the, uh, the MMO electrode then that's that's good that'll be fine for our salt source we're going to use here this is just some average table salt um, importantly it's got anti-caking agent in there I can look up what that number actually is what I, what the compound is but um, I have a feeling it won't interfere anything anyway because we're going to do a recrist of any produced sodium chlorate that we get at the end of it um, I'm a little little tiny bit concerned about the ingredients natural sea salt because um, as you probably are aware sea salt is not just sort of sodium chloride but there's a whole, you know a whole lot of other stuff in, in the oceans um, so, and I, I know these, these electrodes won't really hold up to, to bromine very well, any bromide or bromate. Um, I'm not sure about iodine, but I have a feeling they wouldn't let any sodium bromide into this sort of consumer grade product. Um, even though it says naturally evaporated from the sea, there must be some level of, um, you know, fractional crystallization out there, so they only really get the sodium chloride fraction. Um, but it's not iodized. A lot of salt they sell is has potassium iodine, iodide, or iodate added to it purposely just so that people get a daily intake of iodine. Um, this doesn't look like it has it. It may have that anyway, just as part of the natural sea salt, but um, if all goes well, hopefully it's, it's just, you know, just sodium chloride. There's not too much um, of the other shit in there. And also there's no, no potassium in there. That's a, that's a big thing as well. We're trying to really limit our potassium in this cell because once we turn it into potassium chlorate, it'll be hard to turn that back into sodium chlorate. So, um, yeah, so any potassium will we'll stick with our product. And we are trying to make this as pure as possible just because we can. So, you know, um, we're trying to limit the potassium. Um, so how much do we need? Well, this jar holds 700 mils approximately. Well, probably 800 mils, but I'll put 700 mils in there. Um, so at the sort of saturation level of sodium chloride, is about 230 grams in 
700 mils, so I think I weigh it about 210 grams. Chuck it in there just because it's, it's bitterly cold at the moment, um, and I don't want to do too much heating to get it all dissolved at the moment. Actually, that's a really lame excuse. Maybe I'll just do 230 grams. Yeah, it should all dissolve. Yeah, it should be fine. I'll put 230 grams in there. So I'm just thinking on the fly here. Ooh, this is going to take a while to get to 230. Oh, fuck me dead. This is going to take me ages. Oh, oh man. Um, and so I'm going to add some distilled water to this just to keep our potassium levels down once again because I'm sure my um, tap water and my rain water is going to be full of potassium. Now, to improve cell efficiency quite substantially, we need some dichromate. And I believe, I know I have definitely potassium dichromate, but I believe I have some sodium dichromate. So here in the dark, um, there's no light in this section of my lab, which is very annoying. There's light here in the CD corridor, there's light in the lab, but there's no light for my bloody storage. Um, many, many years ago, I got some a few grams of sodium dichromate. So if I've done well, I reckon it's still going to be on this shelf here somewhere. Just means I have to rife through it a little. And what do you know, I have some right here. So this is a small amount, but we actually only need a real tiny amount for this cell. Um, sodium dichromate isn't very commonly used because it's quite hygroscopic. Um, so you can see it's got some droplets of water in there and this is all set into a big block. I believe it came from Canada from none other than a guy called Planty19. 99. Um, you may know him from Science Mammoths or around the internet. Um, he's quite a quite a genius of home chemistry back in the day. Um, quite young too, but also very mysterious, as many of these uh, chemistry geniuses seem to be. So here's all our salt water. It's not all completely dissolved, and it's quite cloudy. So you know it's not perfect. But then again, nobody's perfect, and I think we should just accept this cell for who he is who it is, it should be fine. It's just salt, not dissolved, and um, as we start converting it into chlorate, it'll all start dissolving anyway, and the um, run temperature of the cell should be quite uh, reasonably high, so everything should dissolve, so everything is fine. So we'll add some dichromate to it. All right, so I've got two small bits of sodium dichromate here. Chuck them in a cell. Um, you know, you can see it goes quite yellow. Um, and now, you might be thinking, oh, but you know, I want to do this, but I only got potassium dichromate. Well, you can use potassium dichromate. The amount of potassium that you add through this way is, is very, very minimal. It's just me being very, very pedantic, just because I remembered I had sodium dichromate. And it's a good idea to uh, get the stuff from the back of the shelf out every so often, because otherwise you just forget about it, and it turns into just a puddle of dichromate solution. So, um, yeah, potassium dichromate is fine for this. A small amount of potassium contamination is whatever, but you know. All right, so we have the whole cell here. So it's slightly yellow from the dichromate. Um, it's got the tubing here now, um, and it goes through a solution here of sodium carbonate. Um, it's probably best if I use a sodium hydroxide solution. Uh, that would scrub the chlorine out better, but it would mean I have, you know, a solution of sodium hydroxide out here. So, um, if I knock over this solution, it's just sodium carbonate. It's not going to, not going to be too bad compared to sodium hydroxide, I feel. So um, it should really scrub all the chlorine out anyway. I'm now onto the hardest part of the whole setup, which is connecting the, uh, the wiring. Um, it's hard for a few reasons. Firstly, because I keep using crocodile clips for the, um, to set off the explosives. So I keep setting them on fire. So um, I thought the chances of me finding any good crocodile clips um, were very slim, but I did eventually find some reasonable looking crocodile clips, so that's good. Secondly, it's very important with MMO electrodes to um, set, put the right polarity on them. So, um, titanium is going to be the cathode, so it should be negative, um, and I'm at least 80% certain of that. Um, also, it didn't help that the, the coloured knobs had fallen off my power supply. So I, <laughs> I got it out and I'm like, I don't even know which of these outlets is positive and negative, but I got my multimeter out and I'm, you know, at least 80% positive that I have them around the right way. So we can do the stats, multiply it out, and, um, you yeah, know, we're reasonably confident that I might not destroy my electrodes as soon as I turn on this power supply. 
And so the question is, how much voltage and amperage do we put through it? Well, this is a voltage and amperage controlled power supply. So uh, I'm going to put it up to, well, I want about 5 amps, I guess. Um, so we'll start turning the voltage until we... Oh, yep, okay, then it switches over to, to uh, current control. So there's five. We should hopefully see some electrolysis happening. Maybe. That's That looked like a bubble. Yep, alright. It's starting. Guys, it's actually start. I was really worried for a second there. I was like, what have I, what have I done wrong? Just think of all the chlorate we have already. The micrograms of chlorate we've already produced. God. <sighs> Alright, so I'm running it at 6 amps, which is probably still quite a conservative number given the size of my anode. Uh, and a couple of, you know, back of the envelope calculations tell me that uh, at 100% cell efficiency, to use up all the chloride and turn it all into chlorate, would take roughly 4.1 days. Obviously, it's not going to run at 100% cell efficiency, so you know it's going to be roughly 50% cell efficiency. But also, we don't want to run all the chloride out. So, if I run it for about four days, um, it should you know use up quite a large amount of the um, chloride. The only thing that really needs to be maintained um, is the pH. Um, because what happens is the pH starts to go up with hypochlorite um, and so you lose a lot of cell efficiency with um, breaking down cell, um, breaking down hypochlorite to turn into chlorate um, and that generates a lot of heat and um, yeah uses up a lot more electrons to get to chlorate rather than um, directly so it's best to sort of maintain it at a pH of about 6 so occasionally I'll get some pH strips out, I might do it right now um, and see if it's really, really basic. I'll just add some dilute hydrochloric acid. All right, I was a little too keen with the pH adjustment and it got acidic very quickly. I definitely overestimated how much hydrochloric acid was needed to adjust the pH. So um, instead, I'm gonna really let that be because that's, that's a minor issue. And hopefully my electrodes will do fine. It's a solution to be acidic and hopefully everything still works out. Um, I assume probably now that I've gone too acidic, it's probably going to have to put heaps of energy in to get it back to, you know, the correct pH. So, because it's around 4, I guess, it should be about 6. So, hopefully everything's fine. Electrochemistry is a bit, a, a bit over my head a lot of the time. So, instead, I'm just going to go to bed and let this, let this run. You know, it's running, you know, um, and I just have to let it run. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so used to reactions, I just have to do something to it, like I have to, you know, like I have time now, I feel like I should be adjusting things or doing something, but really I should just let it go. Oh, the reason the pH was probably out is because, um, ideally it should be running at quite a, uh, like 40, 60 degrees odd, um, and it's, to be honest, it's fucking freezing at the moment, uh, so that's not helping. As a result, it's not really heating too well, so the hypochlorite is not disproportionating into chloride and chlorate, which is why you want the um, cell to run at a higher temperature. And because of that, the pH goes up quite a bit. But I have a feeling that'll be fixed because eventually it'll heat. Like if it, if it keeps running, I assume eventually it's going to start heating up. All right, back out here in the morning, and we can see the bubbling rate has dropped substantially, but that's you know. That'll be okay. Um, what worries me the most is that there's a little bit of floaties, a bit of metal stuff floating around. Um, there's quite a bit of it actually. Um, so, um, oh, it's just really those bits over, over there, morning cat. I don't know where that's from. I've had taken the electrodes out and looked at them and they look fine, so I don't quite know where they're from. I mean, they maybe they're just residual bits that sort of were hanging, just hanging on the electrode from when they were cut or, um, you know, from where it was welded or something, but I don't know if they're titanium or MMO. Um, it's not a good sign at all, but 
I've done everything I think I can to this cell to get it working, you know, perfectly. And the pH I checked it is fine at the moment. So, you know, if if the electrodes are decomposing, then I, I you know, <laughs> I've done everything I can. So <laughs> I don't know, you know, it reaches a point where you just have to accept it. <laughs> it's not going to work because there's not anything anymore I can do. So here we are roughly 24 hours after I first started the cell and I've finally realized while it wasn't, I was trying some external heating, but I was trying to work out why it wasn't um, heating up the cell at all. Um, and I sort of started looking at um, what was the, you know, the maximum current density of, of the electrodes and uh, I worked out what I was doing wrong. I've had this power supply for ages, but I haven't used it in a while. I've actually been reading it with a decimal point in the wrong place. So, I thought I was running it at 7 amps, uh, and it was 0.7 amps. So, this actually only goes up to 3 amps. Um, so, that's not that high. <laughs> uh, so, I've got it sitting at 2.5 amps now. The same amount of voltage, because that's uh, it's controlled. And so now, it might run a lot faster <laughs> than 0.7 amps. So, um, uh, at 2.5 amps, it's probably going to take quite a while. But... At least it's not on 0.7 amps anymore. Uh, at least now it will get a nice level of heating. Uh, yeah, everything makes a lot more sense now. Alright, so we're roughly two days after starting the cell. Uh, I have corrected the <laughs> the amperage to a nice number. It's sitting at about 2.8, which is about the maximum this can put out. Unfortunately, oh, this is quite hot. Nah, it'll be fine. Um, also, the temperature now that it's running at this high amperage is quite nice. It's um, oh, a little bit warm to the touch, so I'd say it's about 30, 40 degrees. Maybe maybe a little lower, but it doesn't help that it's still very, very cold outside. So during the day, this would get to, I think, probably about 40 degrees. And yeah, I was planning originally to make this into one long video from, you know, construction of the cell to getting the sodium chloride chlorate crystals out of it but um seeing as i can only run it at 2.8 amps it's going to take probably many weeks what we don't want is we don't want the chloride level to drop too much because if it does the i think it's the resistance of the cell will go up quite substantially and the mmo anode won't really handle that very well it may not be resistance it might be just something else to do with the chloride concentration but i know that um we really shouldn't let the chloride level drop too much so um hey cat um, this is obviously not the lab, because the cat's here, a bit, you know, the lab is very, very cold at the moment, so, I'm, I'm, and I can run this, this is, you know, kind of outside, so, and I'm scrubbing the chlorine, so I can run this here, this is fine. <laughs> That's why the cat is here, the cat's not allowed in the lab, obviously. And what I'm going to keep doing is, I've got, we've got some, some chloride down the bottom here, and I'll, I'm just going to keep topping that up, because the chlorate is more soluble than the chloride, in, we're turning the chloride into the chlorate, um, but that's just gonna that's gonna be more soluble than the chloride So we're gonna have to keep adding more chloride until a point where there'll be so much chlorate in solution It'll start crystallizing out But that won't happen on the first run um, Just because the chlorate is more soluble really so I'm just gonna have to keep pumping well, not pumping keep dropping in some powder at the bottom I'm just gonna keep uh, pH adjusting probably once a day maybe once every two days You know if I can be bothered so there's it hasn't degraded anymore there's the bits of metal in there, but you know, I've counted them and they're the same <laughs> number of bits of metal. But um, yeah, if you have any thoughts, anything about this cell, <clears throat> because um, I'm going to finish editing this tonight and upload it. So um, you're commenting on it in real time and shit. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully we'll see some results a little bit later on.